If you're having starting issues or in general electrical problems with your OBS Chevy 88 and up, the first thing I would check are these old crusty braided ground straps. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you the location of those and how exactly to replace them on your GMT 400 platform vehicle. The main ground straps I wanna replace are in the engine bay, but before we go ahead and change those out, I wanna focus on the rear end here, specifically this driver rear tire and by the fuel door on this one, there's a ground strap underneath here. So here's my sort of rusty and crusty fuel filler neck. At least the underside. This is the inside of the bed. And here is one of the ground straps. Now it may look like it's in decent shape, but look at that. Literally, it is just crumbling apart. We got one bolt here, and then the more annoying part is the fact that this is totally smooth. So I don't know what the other side of it looks like. If you open up the fuel filler, you do not have access to the other side of this. So I suppose you can drill this out but we're not even gonna go ahead and bother with that. You have a couple other bolts that you can bolt the ground strap to. So what we're gonna be doing is focusing on this one. Here, of course, is the inside of this fuel door. So the ground strap is somewhere in this general area and notice how there's no bolt here. Yeah, you got some other bolts around here that you can undo, but really all that's gonna do is loosen up this plastic piece and you can probably get to that metal piece that the ground strap is attached to via here. However, it looks like being a smooth back end to it, you're probably gonna have to drill that out. So we're gonna go the easy route and what we're gonna do is connect to one of these hinge bolts. So there's one other bolt here you can tie into, but I'm just gonna, again, go the easy route, connect to this. So how we're gonna do that, if you're not familiar with what is called a Torx screw, that's what it looks like. Kind of ish a star head to it. This is a T30, so we're gonna go ahead and loosen this up. And then this is the back side of the bolt that we took out. You have a nice metal piece right here. So of course it's a little bit rusty, so we're gonna take some sandpaper or a wire brush, clean that up. And then now we have a 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench. We'll undo this portion because we're gonna be reusing this bolt and this mounting location to the body. Notice all that crap that's falling off of this? Yeah, that's going into my eyes. So definitely highly suggest wearing some safety glasses. So here's the old one removed. The old 10 millimeter self-tapping bolt that was in the bed frame. All of this pretty much just crumbled. And then this is the replacement. It's a little bit different. This one's 15 inches, so it's much longer. You might be able to find one a bit shorter online, but this was at my local brick and mortar auto parts store. You can find it just about at any one of them. This is Dorman 60213. And then I also suggest replacing the bolt. So this is just something I had in my parts bin, so we're gonna be using that. But I imagine you can reuse the old original bolt. No problem, just maybe clean it up a little bit. Got things cleaned up pretty good. So might not look like it, but the back side where we're gonna be mounting that ground strap is nice and clean. This is cleaned up for the most part. Had to knock off some of the rust. And if you're wondering, the bigger end, I'm gonna have up on this side mounting by the hinge. So this 15 inch is actually Pretty decent size, so there's a little bit of slack here, which is good. Here's the original fuel filler neck bolt. And this is just out of my parts bin. Unfortunately, I don't know what thread pitch or size this nut is, but what you can do is actually just take this and go to your local hardware store and match up a bolt. So this side of it was painted, this side I sanded down, and then here's just a washer. So now what we're going to do is set these two to the side, reattach this bolt, and then once it is in there, we'll go on the back side, attach the ground strap, put the washer on, and of course the nut. With that bolt in place, I have a washer, so we'll go ahead and place that onto the stud, take the ground strap, this bigger end, place it onto there, and then, of course, add in the nut. 
Since we last checked in, I ended up switching out this bolt, the original one with the flathead slit in it, a little bit too small, so I ended up having a bigger one, so another self-tapper. Ended up taping some of this stuff off, and now what we're gonna be using is some just basic black paint. You can go ahead and use some like undercoating or something, but because I kind of went a little bit too much and uh, sanded some of this to bare metal that didn't need to be, we're gonna go ahead and protect it. Here's the finalized product with this rear ground strap. You can barely even tell where it's attached to this fuel door bracket. Here's the back side of that fuel door with this ground strap attached to that bracket, running along into the original location of the bed frame. Probably should have used something more similar to the blue body color, but the name of the game here is to just protect where I ground down to bare metal on that frame so it doesn't rust out like, say, this rusty, crusty fuel filler neck. So I'm sure this will be well protected for years to come. The rest of it already rusty, not so much, but I'll get to that at a different point in time. Onto the front, it's definitely a bit more complicated than the rear, just mainly due to space. So regardless if you have the V6, V8, small or big block, you're gonna have these ground straps. So right here on the passenger side frame, there's a bolt right there. Now you have one strap going up, and it's gonna be hard to see, but right here you have two heater hoses. There is a stud underneath, so one strap goes from the frame underneath these heater hoses. And the second goes from the same mounting location on the frame all the way up into a tube on the back side of this passenger side cylinder head. Here's an angle of underside of the truck. This is the passenger side frame rail and from above, this is the mounting location where both of these grounding straps attach to. So unfortunately from this angle, you're not gonna be able to see that. However, what you will be able to see is the one strap that goes from this frame all the way up to the passenger side cylinder head. It actually runs through this tube up there and that's the path that it takes to mount to the cylinder head. But more importantly, this angle gets you a better look at the underside of those heater hoses. So the second crown strap goes from this frame to the firewall of the vehicle underneath those two heater hoses. So I highly suggest before starting this project, spray this stud especially on the firewall with some penetrating oil because that stud is notorious to rust out and when you go to back it out, you definitely risk breaking it. To break this frame ground bolt loose, I'm going from the top here, and I think you have the most amount of room. I have a 3 8 ratcheting 13 millimeter socket on the end here. Even though it looks like you have a decent amount of room, there's really not a lot of range of travel here, but I think this is gonna be the best way to go about it without stripping this nut out. So you can definitely use extensions and swivels, but uh, historically, for me at least, if I'm putting a lot of torque on a swivel, it's gonna slip off and strip the bolt. So use this method, while not ideal, use it at least to break this bolt loose, and then what we're gonna do now is go from underneath and use a 13 millimeter ratcheting wrench with the swivel head to remove this bolt completely. Here's that 13 millimeter ratcheting wrench with the swivel end. Definitely makes your life so much easier. Now you can choose to try to loosen this bolt with this method first, but for me, this was just way too stuck on, so I had to use the actual ratchet from the top to break it loose. But now that it's loose, you can go ahead and use this method and remove it the rest of the way. So, here you go. Look at that. There are the two ground straps just crumbling away and that 13 millimeter bolt that mounts them to the frame. For the stud that is kind of hidden underneath the heater hoses on this firewall, you can either go from the top or the bottom. This is a 11 millimeter and for me, I don't have an 11 mil and a ratcheting wrench so I'm just gonna break it free and loosen it up as much as I can with a standard 11 mil wrench. Because there's rust on the end of the stud, even though it was loose up until this point, it's catching this rust, so it's becoming difficult to get it off. And now I think I'm at the point where I can just use a standard 11 mil socket, just loosen this thing out the rest of the way. And in case you're wondering what I'm using, I'm using one of these flexi short 3 8 ratcheting. most difficult one in my opinion is going to be the one that goes to the back side of the cylinder head so looking at the top of this engine find this bracket right there now follow it down see how it curves down and then at the very bottom there's a stud right there at the tip of my finger there is one wire 
from this harness that goes to that stud to ground it. And then the thin stranded ground wire that we're replacing also goes to that stud. So it's a 14 millimeter. So to get at it, I'm using another flexible ratcheting wrench. It's not a fun thing to do. And if you have an automatic transmission like this 4L60E, you have this wonderful fill tube in the way as well. Here's the nut removed. Okay. This is a ground wire that goes into the electrical harness, so that definitely has to go back. But underneath it is the stranded ground wire that we're after to replace. For the ground strap that goes from the frame to the engine, the back of the cylinder head, it is 20 inches in length, so the same grounding strap that we used on the rear of the vehicle is not long enough for the front. One of the two is, however, again, the one going from the frame to the engine is not. So I went on Amazon, I got the finest three pack of 20 inch length ground straps. Unfortunately, the one side of the eyelet that goes to the frame was not long enough, so I attempted to drill it out, and well, you'll see exactly what happens. As if getting my hand sucked into the drill press drill bit wasn't bad enough, I thought I'd be able to accomplish drilling this thing out by hand and well that obviously turned out exceedingly well just like the first time. At this point I got so incredibly frustrated I found a random eyelet in my garage. I cut off this shrink tube end that comes on it and I decided to lob off the mangled eyelet to the new cable. I twisted the metal strands shoved it into the new random eyelet I had in the garage, laid it on the concrete, and hammered it down to crimp it into place. Words can't describe how much I hate this eyelet on the end of here with this shrink tubing, and then I actually added some electrical friction tape on top of it just for added protection but it's definitely on there pretty nice and secure the eyelet even though I kind of smushed a little bit it fits even better with this bolt in there and there is a little bit of give and play to it but so was the original end to it ideally I would have liked to have swapped this into the new cable but it is what it is or even just find a better sized eyelet to this bolt but I wasn't running around any more than I already have trying to find a cable like this. So while not ideal and while it looks like dog shit, I'd say it's going to work out better than that original one. Captain's log, I'm OCD. So I'm going to wrap this entire thing with this friction electrical tape. And this is 100% not needed. At this point, I probably should have did a copper stranded wire with some casing of some sort on it but here we are I can't live with just having the eyelet with some tape on it so I'm gonna do the whole thing To do this one the ground that goes from the frame to the firewall if you're wondering it's the same exact dormant part number as we used on the rear it's just now i'm gonna go ahead go down that rabbit hole and match this one just like this one <laughs> when sourcing a grounding strap that's 20 inch for a replacement Measuring the ends, this is the bigger eyelet, measuring these fingers, and we're looking at about 7 sixteenths inside diameter. Realistically, you're probably only going to be able to find half inch. And then the smaller side, this measures out to be 3 eighths inside diameter. Here is one of the replacement grounding straps. 
and for comparison it comes with a quarter inch inside diameter eyelet which I attempted to drill out on this one and it just kind of martyred up a bit but you can see the drastic size difference there so try to find a 20 inch grounding strap with a half inch end on the one side and around a 3 8 inch inside diameter hole on the smaller side We have a longer grounding cable ready to go in, and you can use mechanics wire or you can kind of just fish it through. So basically, so right there, that tube where that corrugated wire goes through, that's exactly where we need to fish it through. So we have the smaller eyelet. It's gonna go down first, and we just fish it down and let gravity do the work. There's the underside, and you just kind of tug on through so you have enough slack to get to the frame. So right here we have the new grounding strap. We'll go on the stud, and then of course definitely don't forget about the other grounding strap. That's part of the harness. I'll put on the top, and now we just need to thread on. The original 14 millimeter nut, tighten it down. That bolt is actually 13 millimeter. The 11 is for the stud underneath these heater hoses, but the factory wiring, at least on this truck, was identical to this, so that's what I'm sticking with. That bolt is now cinched down. I'm gonna clean some of the surrounding area, hit that with a bit of paint and then we're ready to take this cable that goes to the firewall and attach it to the stud underneath. So I mentioned I was gonna put a lick of paint on here, but ultimately I decided I'm gonna leave it as is, mainly because I do want it to get a bit of surface rust on there to blend in with the rest of the crusty frame. Eventually, long-term goal is to clean up this frame, pull the bed off, clean everything up as best as possible and recoat it in something to protect it, whether that be just paint, some pour 15, something to look better than its current condition. But unfortunately, that day is not today. In the meantime, I'm more than happy with the replacement of those grounding straps. Now for me, I didn't have any issues with those broken grounding straps. The front two here were totally severed. The rear was on its way out, but I've heard you having starting issues, no starts, hard starts, misfires, taillight issues with the grounding strap in the back. And then there's another check you want to do for ground and that's in this inner fender so if you're having starting issues not only would i look into the two cables there the one in the back but also this one right here you may need to pull that bolt out clean it up reattach it or you may be looking at some battery cable replacements and they go to the starter the alternator all of that stuff so hopefully this video helped you out if it did be sure to give it a thumbs up consider subscribing because i have a ton of stuff out there and more obs stuff on the way with that being said i appreciate you watching and i'll catch your friends next time